Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we're going to solve the eventual safe states. We've already done this problem while we did cycle detection. But since now we are doing topo sort, we are going to do this problem using topo sort. So what is the problem state? The problem state, you're given a directed graph of V e, uh, vertices and E edges. Uh, it's a zero based indexing edge. A node is a terminal node. If there are no outgoing edges, very, very important. A node is a terminal node. If there are no outgoing edges, a node is a safe node. If every possible path starting from that node leads to a terminal node, you start from a node and if all the paths end up at a terminal node, then you can call that as a safe node. Now you need to return an array containing all the safe nodes of the graph. The answer should be sorted in ascending order. So let us first understand the question. So you're given this particular graph imagine okay so over here if i ask you in this graph which are the safe nodes what will be your answer so one of the things is for sure all the terminal nodes are safe nodes because terminal nodes do not have outgoing edges like if you see six is a safe node five is a safe node is seven a safe node it still has an outgoing edge you need to check for it you need to check for it okay let's start the checking from zero so if you start from zero, is it like are all the paths ending at terminal node? Like one of the paths is definitely ending at a terminal node. What is a terminal node? No outgoing edges. Very simple. So zero, if you start, it ends at five. So zero, one path is ending at a terminal node. Are all the paths? No. There is one path of zero which ends at zero himself. So that's not a terminal node because all the paths has to end at a terminal node. Then only I can call it as a safe node. Let's check out for one. Once one of the paths does end at a terminal node, but does all its path? Let's check. No, not a safe node. Let's check for two. Two has only one path and it ends at a five. So a terminal node. So two can be called as a terminal node. So I'll just tick mark two. Let's check out for three. Three has one of the paths as this, this, this ends up at a terminal node but are all the paths let's have a check no three cannot be called as safe node let's check out for four where's four yeah four has only one path and it ends at a terminal node so it can be called as a safe node let's check out for five five is the terminal node itself so no paths five is a safe node let's check out for six terminal node itself so a safe node let's check out for seven seven has only one path and one of the paths and at a terminal node from seven if you go on this direction you do not end up at a terminal node so seven might have one outgoing edges but they split in future like they are splitting in future what about seven seven has one outgoing edge but can have multiple paths so one path does end at a terminal node but are all the paths let's check no doesn't end up at a terminal node the so seven is not a safe node so as of now we get two four five six these are our safe nodes now in the previous video we have already solved this using dfs if you haven't seen that out i'll highly recommend please go back and watch that video out so how will we solve this problem we'll use a bit of uh, higher space complexity in order to solve this so what i'll do is i'll go back uh, to the example that we used so this is the example that we will be solving so what i will do is i know one thing for sure if this is the graph and if i have to find out the safe nodes i know the initial starting safe nodes are the terminal nodes can i say all the terminal nodes are the safe node so can i say if i count the out degree like for seven the out degree is zero for something like i think yeah only for seven is the terminal node over here for seven the out degree as of now is zero so can i say seven is definitely a safe node i can definitely say so what i'll try to do is since topo sort has everything in sense of in degree i'll try to reverse the edges why you'll understand when i explain the algorithm that we are going to use you'll understand why okay so basically what i'll do is i know seven is a terminal node n like seven whoever seven is coming from it'll say okay reduce this part so that is the technique that we will follow you'll understand as i start explaining so what i'll do is i'll say 
reverse all the edges that's the first thing we'll do reverse the graph or reverse all the existing edges so what will happen is if this is pointing something like this it will start pointing something like this if this is pointing like this like this this will go and point in upward direction so just reverse all the edges yes just reverse all the edges just go across and revolve sorry reverse all the edges so after reversing all the edges this is how the graph looks and this is how it is looking previous so we have understood the first step which is reversing all the edges now we will follow the plain topological sort what does topological sort says get all the nodes with in degree zero get all the nodes with in degree zero and then do a removal of edges on neighbors on adjacent nodes so that is what uh, kind of topo sort stated so if i try to write the in degree can i say the in degree for this one will be zero because on the reversed graph the in degree will be zero because there are no incoming edges can i say the in degree for this one will be one because there is only one incoming edge which is this one can i say for five also it will be one can i say for four also it will be one can i say for three it will be two because there are two incoming edges for two it will be two two incoming edges for one it will be one for zero it will be one for eight it will be one sorry for eight it will be rather two because there are two incoming edges this one and this one for 10 it will be one for nine it will be one for 11 it will be one so what i've done is i've written down all the in degrees of every right now figure out who are the terminal nodes the terminal nodes will always have in degree as zero so once you've written down all the in degrees what is the next step figure out who are the terminal nodes anyone with a in degree as zero because this is a reversed graph so instead of out degree it will be in degree anyone with an in degree of zero will be a terminal node so what you'll do is please uh, define a q data structure because that is how the topo sort works and in that put up that guy yes in that put up that guy who is no nothing but a terminal node so you put that guy right that's a starting phase next simply start the bfs so first node that you get is seven and this can be a part of yes this can be a part of your safe node because it's a terminal node now who is seven connected to seven is having a part to six seven is having an adjacent node to six so can i say six has an in degree six has an in degree of one as of now but it has one path which is from seven so can i say let's remove it so if i remove this path the in degree goes to zero so we get a node six which is again having an in degree zero so i can say fine let's take it seven was done now does seven have anyone else no let's get the next one out six so the moment i get six what do i say okay who are six heading into five and four let's reduce the in degrees of both these guys so this will become zero this will become zero so that means you're removing the edge reduce the in degrees so once you've reduced the in degrees your five is in degree zero four has in degree zero so it'll be like five and four goes in and this six is done the so six can be a part of your safe node so you can just add it into your safe nodes what is the next step get at the next node which is five let's see for five five you have only one adjacent node which has an in degree of two so you can just reduce the in degree to one and you can remove this particular guy done but is it making it an in degree of zero no so you do not take it and put it into the queue instead of that you wait so will you take three and put it into the queue data structure no because the in degree is one you haven't removed all the paths from one so you'll stop does five have any other adjacent nodes no so we can say it's done next get the next guy four so for four there's only two adjacent nodes which is two and three so reduce the in degrees reduce the in degrees so this path is removed once you have reduced the in degrees you will see this guy three is having an in degree of zero because all the incoming paths have been removed now you can take it and put it into the queue so i can say four is also done so apparently five and four can be added into your safe nodes now the next time you will get a three now who is three one into or adjacent node it's just a two so reduce the in degree and remove the path so once you reduce the in degree you can say for three 
you can actually take this two and put it into the queue data structure three is also done amazing next you have two so the moment you have two you're like okay we have a two two is pointing to one so i'll just reduce the end degree and i'll take one now and i'll put it into the queue data structure so two is also done and i can say I can say two is also a part of my safe node. So two is also done. Next is one. So if you see one, one is pointing to zero and one is pointing to eight. So what I will do is I'll simply go and reduce the end degree to zero. And over here I'll reduce the end degree to one. So both the paths are removed, but I'll only take the zero. I'll only take the zero because this is having an end degree zero. So I'll take the zero. Perfect. So one is also done. I can say one is a part of my safe node. I'll take back zero. Zero is taken. Now for zero, does it have any other nodes? No. So as of now, I can say that, hey, listen, it doesn't have any other node. So zero is done. Zero can be a part of your safe node. So once everything is done, you'll get all your safe nodes and the queue will become empty. If you see the queue becomes empty and this portion is never executed. Why? Because it has paths from somewhere else, thereby you never executed it. You just backtrack from the terminal load from the terminal load wherever the paths were heading you removed you removed you removed and this eight had a path from one but it also had a path from nine so this path was removed but since it had other paths which were which did not have terminal nodes thereby it could not remove it so seven led to all your nodes which had which were actually leading to seven so apparently you get all these safe nodes Make sure you sort the safe node. Make sure you do it because they will be in very randomized order. So guys, I hope you've understood uh, the very simple topological sort implementation over here. The only thing that we did was reverse the graph and everything else was different. So just in case you did, now it's time to code this up. So I'll be coding the C++ code on the right and you can find the Java code on the left. So, so we're given the adjacency list and remember we need to reverse the graph. So really we can keep uh, something like adjacency reverse. That's the best way to define it. And then we can go across to like i equal to zero, i lesser than v, i plus plus. And we can go in the adjacency list, something like for auto of it and on the adjacency of i. And what I can do is I can say, now it is a neighbor of i. This means it is a neighbor of i. It means the edge is from i to it this is what it means i need to convert this to it to i understand i need to convert this to it to i so adjacence of it will now have this neighboring node as i done and at the same time please count the in degrees as well so you can take something like in degree of v and you can assign them to zero and over here in degree means i right because it goes to i so i's in degree will be increased so in degree of i plus plus perfect all in degrees are done now just figure out which are terminal nodes very simple how do you figure that out yes if in degree of i is equal to equal to zero you say it's a terminal node and what do you do to that you definitely put that into your queue data structure because that is what we require so just take a queue data structure and over here you can say q dot push of i perfect and over here take something as the answer which is safe notes at the end of the day please make sure you uh, sort the safe notes and you return the safe notes that's what you'll do and over here it's a very simple thing simple bfs where you say q not empty and you get the node and that's very simple q dot front and you say q dot pop and right after this you go for this adjacency by the way this will be adjacency reverse you go for uh, the adjacency reverse guy because that is your reversed graph and in this whoever are the adjacent nodes yes whoever are the adjacent nodes you say in degree of these adjacent nodes will go reduce and if after reduction the in degree states to be zero i'll say the q to actually take this note that's what you'll do and over here you need to store all the safe notes so whoever is coming out because if the in degree is zero 
that means they are coming out from the queue and that means they were pushed because the end degree was zero so whoever is coming out of the queue you can call them as safe notes because the end degree was zero that is the reason they were pushed so you can just put it on notes and this should be yeah this should be the shorter version of the code now what you'll do is uh you will just simply com uh, compile this let's see if it is fine yeah let's quickly submit this as well so as we see it is running absolutely fine now this was a very very simple uh, code so guys i hope you've understood the solution let's talk about the time complexity the time complexity is similar to tuposort so i'll not be discussing it but what about the space complexity it's similar to tuposort with an additional overhead of this extra space for storing the reversed graph and an extra time complexity of sorting all the safe nodes which is n log n at the worst case so this is the extra overhead we are using like the extra space over here and the extra time over here apart from the tuple sort and the previous method we did not like in the dfs method of solving this problem we did not have this overhead of storing the reverse graph because dfs did work out over there because we followed the cycle method this was a very simple tracing back backtracking method so why did i teach you this because i wanted to teach you problem solving my method like i don't want to just see that a green mark of accepted i want to teach you various methods of solving a problem and then only you'll get good at problem solving so guys i hope uh, this video was informative just in case you like this video please make sure you hit that like button if you're new to our channel please do consider subscribing to us if you haven't checked out our dp series and the hd sheet the links are in the description and yeah with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care